Oh, okay, Brian, I think maybe it's time that you put that away. I know you're really excited about the latest app to be approved by Apple. It's so entertaining, though. <laughs> yeah, but this is a family Stickman. podcast. <laughs> Stickmen aren't offensive. Yeah. Well, well anyway, we, we have a Gadget Astro. Lab podcast to do here at Wired.com in sunny San Francisco, and the people at home. Well, well, well you know what? We'll get to the iPad part in a minute. <laughs> All right. For now, we got a new phone here. Yeah, that's right. Check it out. This is the Motorola Droid X. Verizon's newest phone. It's coming out in mid-July. What's new about it compared to uh, the first Droid? Well, uh, one thing it doesn't have that the old Droid had, it had has is a keyboard. There's no keyboard. And that let them make it a lot slimmer. It's got kind of a funky profile here. It's fatter at the top. 8 megapixel camera. Yes. Right. And a much bigger screen. I mean, actually, check this out. I've got an Evo here. Sprint's a uh, big Android phone. And uh, if you compare the screen sizes. This is a really big screen compared to the both, iPhone, too. Yeah, that's right. They're both mm. really big. 4.3 inch screen on the Droid X. And it uh, looks beautiful. I really, really like that. Um, so would you rather have a bigger screen or, or a, a smaller screen with higher resolution? That's a really good question. For one thing, a big screen like this is really easy to read, right? So you can look at it. But it's hard to pocket. Like, if you're walking around, it, it's, it fits comfortably in your pocket. But yeah. as soon as you sit down, it's like you really know that you've got, like, this big thing Yeah, in your particularly pocket. I wear kind of tight jeans, too, when I, you know, the... <laughs> <laughs> bigger, bigger screen would just kind of bug me. And I, I yeah, would imagine exactly. that uh, it isolates a lot of women, too, from wanting a, an Android phone. I mean, it, for one thing, it's a really nerdy phone to begin with. And for another, a big screen, I think, uh, is so, like kind of a deal breaker for them. Yeah, there's no question that they're marketing the Droid for men. And uh, just like they did with the last Droid, I mean, it's got this sort of blocky, macho styling. The advertising is all aggro and robots. I mean, it's even got this Droid. Really nasty, yes, <laughs> droid. It's my um, favorite part about that phone. It's got this nasty red robot eye, which, I mean, I can't even stand to look at. I would change the wallpaper first thing. But there's no question this is a man's phone. <laughs> well, at least that's the way Verizon is positioning it. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll have some more detailed looks at, uh, at the Droid X on uh, Gadget Lab, wire.com slash Gadget Lab, so check that out. Something that the Droid is going to do that the iPhone doesn't do is run Flash, right? We, yes. Adobe just released Flash for Android phones. Yes, and uh, Android 2.2, aka Froyo, is out, and that will have ten um, that will have Flash support built in. So that's a big step forward because this is the first time, to my knowledge, that the full Flash player has been available on any smartphone. Yeah, you know, we we had a phone here a couple weeks ago. This one just doesn't have uh, the new Froyo yet, so we can't show it to you. It will when it ships, though. Yeah, it will. Uh, we had a prototype uh, HTC phone running a. Uh, Running Flash a couple weeks ago, I, I tried. I wasn't very impressed. You it's know? a little slow, isn't it's it? It's really slow. And when you're playing a Flash game, these games were originally made with, for for mice and keyboards. Keyboards, a lot of keyboard shortcuts. And like, so, yeah. it's just kind of like, why am I using a touchscreen phone with the, these games and these applications? It doesn't really translate yet. So I'm I think not there's. Sure, I'm not sure that's an. I mean, it means that's an objection for current. Flash games, but I'm not sure that's an objection long term. Because yeah, yeah if I think you can looking run Flash, forward, I think that there's some potential there. I, I also just found that the whole thing was just kind of laggy. Yeah. But you know, there's some work to do, and and uh, there's been plenty of criticisms, of, and th that's why it's taken so long for this thing to even get on these phones. The so. I'll tell you, the one thing that I won't miss if Flash never really takes off on smartphones, I won't miss those annoying splash screens that web designers feel like they need to put on <laughs> yeah. their sites. You can't see anything until you go through the Flash intro. Oh, ridiculous. Well, I'm happy with the iPad right now. You know, the iPad doesn't have Flash. And instead, it's got these <laughs> awesome applications, like the one that you saw earlier. But Oh, which know. was? <laughs> iKama Sutra XL. Wow. Now, how did, that, like, how did that get into the App Store? I mean, really, did Apple just <laughs> lose their minds? Well, you know, Apple is pretty sensitive about pornography and, and sexual content, and this one, I think the people just tailored it in the right way, <laughs> as in use stick figures instead of, you know, body parts. So it's all wide, widely open interpretation. What okay. exactly they're doing? Okay. So, so bottom line here: stick figures getting it on, no problem. Yep. But uh, classic literature like James Joyce with a cartoon version that shows like um, naked breast. Can't do it. I'm sure some people got a stick men fetish. It'll be okay. <laughs> uh, there's this awesome application, though, that I found. Actually, Charlie found. It's from the Guardian newspaper called The Guardian Eyewitness. And they show a photo of a different Guardian photo taken every day. Those are some great photos. So this application is free, by the way. Excellent photos. 
And what I really like about this is they, they have captions describing the photo as well as a pro tip on how this photo was taken. So oh, that's you can cool. actually learn something from an iPad application. It's pretty awesome. Whoa, no and, way. And you know, I'm a horrible photographer, so reading this stuff is actually kind of fascinating to me. They, they really explain the theory that they use to uh, take these photos. So that's just one photo a day? Yep, one photo a day. That's pretty nice. But it's free, and it looks really nice on the iPad screen. Brilliant display, so. Let me show you an app that I found this week. I kind of like this. This is another image-centric app, 3D Medical Images. And this one is just uh, um, medical uh, renderings of what it looks like inside bodies, skeleton, muscular system, things like that. It's just a bunch of beautiful photos and uh, <laughs> is that all weird it does? photos. <laughs> yep. I would like it to take an x-ray of my body parts. There you go. But there's no camera yet on the iPad, so maybe no, later. No, see, look at that. Look at that, the brain. <laughs> it's got the brain. Um, yeah, so pretty fun. There's one of a skeleton hand giving you the middle finger. That's my favorite one. So far. <laughs> oh, yeah. What else did you find I on the app I want to show you uh, this iPhone app. Uh, my buddies at Tap 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 made. It's called Camera Plus. And in, you know, in the past, I've talked about three different applications for editing photos, uploading photos, and even taking photos. But this application does all three of those in one place. So you, you can take a photo, and then after you take it, you can go ahead and edit it. There's a, there's a whole bunch of filters inside the application. So here's one of, one of my friend's cat. You can click Edit. And there's all these different effects that you can apply to it. Until you, and then you can select whatever you want. After that, you can share it on Flickr, Twitter, Facebook, or you can email it. So all in one place. You, before, I was just using different applications to do all that. And so what makes this app better than others is that you can do, do it all editing <laughs> and uploading in one place? Yeah. Convenient. I mean, and how much does it cost? Uh, that costs 99 cents right now. Nice. Yep. I like that price, 99 cents. That's like I can buy an app without having to worry to about free, it. Yeah. yeah, basically. So uh, Apple has sold, uh, what, how many, 3 million iPads now? 3 million iPads. It's been less than three months, hasn't it? Pretty impressive. Wow. People are definitely buying the things. And there's a new iPhone out, the iPhone 4, which we'll have uh, more video coverage of. Yep, we're, we're going to have more video coverage of that. A uh, whole bunch of people already got it when they pre-ordered it early. Lucky bastards. But, <laughs> you know, we got one too, so we'll, we'll give you a closer look at that soon. So I want to know, like, some people are getting the iPhone early, and obviously some of those people are, uh, you know, reviewers that Apple has handpicked because they, they want this particular Apple's reviewer to have it. Apple's A-list. Yep. Yeah, they're A-list. They know the reviewers won't give them a very hard uh, evaluation. But some are just ordinary people who just somehow, like, the iPhone showed up in FedEx or something. Like, what's going on with that? Yeah, right. So I think, you know, it's just... Actually, a, probably a mistake on FedEx's part. I mean, these phones were supposed to come out June 24th, but instead people were getting them on June 22nd. So, I mean... A FedEx mistake. So you don't think Apple's doing this just to mess with you? Yeah, uh, I mean, it would just be kind of too weird. It doesn't seem to have any deliberate purpose. So I don't think there's any sort of PR strategy behind it. It's just probably just a goof up. All right. And they've said that 600,000 <clears> of those were pre-ordered, and uh, they're probably going to sell out. Is it worth waiting in line? Uh, you know, if you didn't pre-order the device, I highly recommend against standing in line because 600,000 pre-orders is just kind of insane. Um, so there's a chance you'll be able to get one in the store, though, right, for the next couple weeks if you're willing to go early. And this is sort of the typical Apple MO, right? They sell there's out already, the first day. I mean, AT&T has said they're not going to have the phone in stores until a week later. Uh, same thing with uh, Walmart and Best Buy. They're going to have really, really low stock is what they've already said. So pretty slim chances of getting an iPhone 4 if you did not pre-order or reserve it in a store already. But So your best advice, yeah, reserve you don't have one to now if you want one? I'm guessing you're not going to have to wait too long. I mean, it's just going to be a week. You know, it's just a damn phone. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's but it's the iPhone 4. Yeah. Man. This is like the greatest gadget event of the Who cares set? about well, iPhone right, 4? So you know yeah. what's a bigger deal to me? Seahorses. Oh, yeah, seahorses. Sea they horses might be going extinct. are in danger of going extinct. <laughs> <laughs> Our video team made a really nice video. You should check that out, too, on wire.com slash video. It's an awesome video. Yep. All right. Well, that's about all the time we have for in this week's podcast. We'll be back next week with more uh, iPad apps, I'm sure, hijinks, and uh, the gadget news of the day. Yep. Until then, I'm Dylan Twinney. I'm Brian Chan. Thanks for joining us. See you.